So hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of CA Ultra. On this episode, we have a very like interesting one where obviously like, no longer playing. We can't really break down their games. But what we're going to do is talk about sort of a roster mania edition for the Toronto Ultra. And that's going to be sort of taking a look at some of the rumors that we've seen. Obviously, Kami and Kleenex have been recently signed. We're going to talk about that, give our opinions on that. Obviously, Bants and Methods are still up in the air. We're going to sort of speculate about that. And if you guys haven't seen Methods gif that he recently posted on twitter it might be more interesting than you initially think and yeah. then finally we're going to sort of give our like i don't want to say dream roster but some of the realistic looks that we think the toronto ultra can do going into the next season that i think will elevate yeah. this team and bring them to the next level so with that out of the way uh i'm one of your hosts as always spencer and with me is chris chris how's it going Pretty good. Uh, you know, as you guys uh, can also see, uh, if you're watching this live, this is the first time we're doing this on uh, Twitch. Yeah. I think uh, streaming is something we wanted to do for a while. So we're just kind of getting a gear of it today, seeing how it goes. And if it goes well, I think we'll do a little bit more in the future. So um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, uh, check us out at uh, CA Ultra on uh, Twitch. We might, have to add it to the, blah, we might have to add that to the description below. <laughs> That's one of those places you can find us. If not, for sure, check us out on Twitter. If we ever do this again, we will definitely let you guys know there. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's just get the show on the so, road. So first and foremost is um, I think we just I think we just start with methods. I think this is a big thing that a lot of people in the community are talking about because yeah, I was pretty vocal. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw my tweets. You might not have. Uh, I know methods did. He did reply to it. Um, but I was pretty vocal about like not running it back. Like when this team was first announced and it was going to four v four, I sort of put a thing out like you know you know if you guys are gym who would you pick what would you do and we started hearing rumors about other teams in the cdl most notably the potential phase roster of our cities celium simp and Abizi, which is such a nasty roster on paper right like that's such an incredible roster so we start to yeah. hear rumors about the potential rosters that could be put forward and i started thinking about like you know what the toronto ultra should do to try to push themselves into that echelon and i think that i was pretty on the board of not just running it back. I know some fans are like, oh, our five should be <laughs> Methods, Classic, Cami, Kleenex, and Bands. Like, that should be our five next year. And, you know, we did well at the end of the year. Let's just run it back. And I was like, um, you know, maybe not. <laughs> like, I think we had a good end of the year. Uh, but I also don't want to forget that for, you know, what, 75% of the year, 80% of the year, we were an 11th seed team. I know part of that was our inability to clutch map fives and that that wasn't an accurate representation of the team. Like, <laughs> We were bottom two, but I don't think we were bottom two. Um, so what are your thoughts on methods? You just want to feel talking about methods, but you didn't mention methods. No, that was just what I was getting at. So I, I said we shouldn't necessarily run it back, but I didn't think we would drop methods. Like I, I kind of thought like, hey, like, you know, no offense to Bance. I think Bance is a good player. But when I had sort of thought that like you want to build around a trio – that trio would be methods, Cami, and Kleenex. I think those guys stood out to me the most throughout the entire yeah, year, and that's and that's sort of what I thought the direction the team would go in. On top of the fact that like methods, I mean, outside the fact that I think he's a good player, um, very clearly a popular figure, you know, amongst the community. Which like, let's just be serious here. This is like this is a business, right? Like that has to play some sort of role. Um, he was, I don't want to say the face of the franchise, but you could definitely argue he was, especially earlier on in the year when we were kind of getting dunked on a little bit. Yeah. Um. So I was just sort of setting the, setting the stage by like, I said we shouldn't run it back, but I also didn't think we would drop methods and that'd be the route that we would take. Uh, that The gift that he posted of the, my watch has ended with the King of the North, Jon Snow, surprised me to say the least. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what? why do you think that he was not announced in the signing with Cami and Kleenex? And why do you think he posted it? So, okay, in terms of why he posted it, it could either be beta or he's like potentially dropped, right? Um, I think it's a pretty clear reason why he was initially signed. I think it became pretty clear that the 4v4 situation has sort of been this thing of like, it's very well known that like some teams are trying to cost cut, right? Like, and not only are teams trying to cost cut, but I think salaries were pretty inflated going into this year. So I think it was a combination of did Cami and Kleenex outperform their initial contract, their one plus one? I think absolutely. Like, I think if you're the Toronto Ultra, you just pick up their team options, boom. It's problem solved. Right, like they're they're probably on the lower end of salary because going into the year they're probably your like seventh eighth players so you would have signed, so they were probably signed as a sub and outperformed that to become a starter. So if you're a team, you just pick up their team option because it's not an inflated contract. In fact, they might be making less than they're actually worth. Now methods, on the other hand, and Bance is included in this, probably a little bit different, right? Much bigger brand, 
much more notoriety, will probably sign to a larger contract. So if you're the Toronto Ultra, like we saw this with London, right? London released their entire team. There's no way that every single one of those players is going to walk. You saw the same with Minnesota, right? They let every single person go, and then the GM came out like you probably see some people or at least one person back. So I think what a lot of teams are doing is they're dropping, quote-unquote, some players and then trying to re-sign them for like a newer, more friendly, budget-friendly, COVID-friendly contract going into next year. So yeah, that's my yeah, initial so, thought. Yeah, my that's kind of what my thought is too. My thought is that they're still negotiating it, which is why they haven't been releasing it. I think it's a better PR move to you know, not just like drop a player just to re-sign it because it just looks kind of bad. And you're like, I'm dropping you just so I can get a better deal on the contract. Mm-hmm. It makes a little bit more sense in my mind to be doing that um, a little bit more behind closed doors, which is why I think Methods hasn't been officially announced yet because they're, yeah. they're re-signing that. But I, I think that Toronto does have full intention of bringing him back. You know, Adam quoted tweeted this out, but he said that, you know, Toronto Ultra was one of the, you know, highest earning in terms of revenue uh, yep. uh, franchises in the Call of Duty League. And I don't think that there, I don't think that should be a doubt that part of that reason is because of Chef Tony. No, I think sure. he has brought, brought a lot of money for them. And I think that they want to keep him because of that. If not also because he, you know, he's a good player. Yeah, and the, and one of the last things I think is why he was announced, and it's possible is it's possible you know Dominique is sitting there trying to improve the spot and get, you know get somebody better at the very least somebody who she determines is better, and they just haven't been announced because it's like well if we get somebody like a Clayster for instance even though I I don't think there's a chance we do but I'm just throwing out names right like a potential hey we get Clayster then maybe we drop methods and if we don't we just resign them right just keeps your options open. Um, Again, I think, yeah, I think I would have been surprised. I, I would be surprised if we dropped them because, like you said, like selling sponsorships and brand. And I think Chef Twenty was such a was such a funny thing. But also, just like yeah, a good player. Do I think it's possible to like? Do I think that if we drop Chef Twenty, that this team is going to the you know we're burning everything and we're going to collapse? Like no, like I think it's an interesting play by Dominique. Like again, I. I Preface this at the start. I was not a fan of running this back. Like just building around Kami and Kleenex yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with another exactly. AR flex is something I think that Dominique should look at. And to be frank, I didn't think it was something she was going to. So I'm, I kind of respect the fact that she is. I just, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it would like dropping methods is risky. Like in my opinion, you only drop methods if you know you can replace him with somebody who you're really happy with. Right, like if you go out there and you get a Clayster, now okay, it looks a little bit different, right? Like people are saying you keep Clayster methods, you're not going to keep both of them, right? You, they won't fit on the same roster. Like it would be one or the other. Like if you go out there and you maybe get like a Wuskins, like he's an interesting piece. Maybe you let methods go, but other than that, I mean, some people were saying, you know, like okay, like Assault became just available from Minnesota, and okay. it's like I don't know if I want to. We'll, risk we'll that. talk a little bit. We'll talk more about that a little bit later when we talk about our roster. But let's kind of stick on track with um, okay. you know, our thoughts on you know the recent news. So you know we dropped they dropped six players. You know everybody except for Bance, Cami, Kleenex. Yeah. Do you think that was the right move? Absolutely. I was again. I, I was very much a. This team cannot run it back. Too many teams are unproven. It's four v four. There's too many roster yeah. slots available. If you assume that Seattle's not going to get worse, right? They're going to improve. LAG is not going to get worse. They're going to improve. New York's going to improve. Florida can improve. Like at the end of the year, we are what? Like the seventh best team consistently? Seventh, yeah. eighth? So I, I think, yeah, just running it back with the, the same four, I think we were just going to fall behind and arguably the most important. Uh, Word of the hour, friends. Run it back. Run it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I said so, that like five times. I said it five times. Minutes. Dude, I just don't know. I, I was thinking about it. I've been thinking about this way too long. Um, but yeah, anyways. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. Uh, I, I think that we needed to make changes. So that was a good that was a good choice. But here's the one thing I'm I'm I think is a little bit harder of a decision. Bams. You know, he's not he's not he's not off yet. I'd say that if there's out of the four people that we have right now, Bams, Cleanest, Cami, Methods, if you're gonna, you know, eject one of them, you're ejecting Bams. I agree. Do you think they should? Do you think they should take out Bams? It's tough. So I think Bance, and this is no disrespect to Bance. I think Bance is a good player. I think Bance can be a fourth. Again, if it wasn't for the run it back, like if it, if it was, if we could improve other areas, you know what I mean? I think that we would, but I think maybe you keep Bance as a like safe swap. 
um, if any of you are familiar with like Pokemon, Pokemon Go, whatever, like, like in, in your PvP, like you have like a safe swap. You have like an option where it's like, okay, like let's say we go, and we'll, again, we'll get into roster construction later, but let's say you want to go out there, you want to get like a risky, young and up and coming prospect, like a Hydra or a Pred, or you want to go up there, you want to sign somebody who was really going to be a four, didn't necessarily perform in Modern Warfare, but you think they can reperform next year, and you want to sign them. It's good to have somebody on the bench who you know that you can slot in and do their job. I know we heard Bance is a really good in-game leader. Um, obviously, I don't think he was a bad player by any stretch of the imagination. He was actually one of our more consistent players all year long. I think he was one of our better players all year long. Like I think he is a definition of somebody you keep as like a fifth or sixth who, if you do take a shot at one of these young up-and-coming talents or somebody from you know last year who you think can work out but doesn't, it's nice to have Bance on the bench. I don't mind keeping those four. I just wouldn't pencil Bance in as a starter. I think that would be a mistake. But I'm okay with yeah. keeping him. Yeah, well, here, here's the thing. Like, you know, Bance is that guy who's that safe swap on the top five roster. And hey, what I think Toronto does as a smart move is obviously they can't have as many people on the roster. But what they do have is they probably have working relationships with other people, yeah. other, you know, semi-pros, other individuals that just got dropped, may not get picked up. And, you know, with that, those working relationships, if, you know, we started the 2021 season and some of those people aren't working out, then they can make a hot swap into a new person. Mm -hmm. No, I, I totally agree. It is one of those things where it's like, yeah, as long as he's not penciled in as a starter, like as long as Dominic goes out there and takes some risks and does try to improve the team, I, I think he has a spot. Again, in-game leadership, he can bring up, he can help develop people. Like, if things behind the scenes are good, I think you can keep those four, add two more pieces, and then I'm happy. Exactly. So with that, I mean, we have to add, you know, a couple more pieces. So I, yeah. I feel like I feel like we should just get started because I don't see any questions in the chat. Once again, guys, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. We'll have, be happy to discuss them and chat about them. But yeah. uh yeah, so let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Spencer, how before we get into the exact people that we picked, tell me how what was your methodology why were you how do you construct your roster it was funny because i thought that this was a really easy decision for a long time i was like oh five people okay methods can be clean x pick two more then all of a sudden went four before and i was like okay a little bit harder because again you're keeping 75 percent of a eighth seed team which i'm not a big fan of but we did end the year really strongly so it's possible we had the year continue we would have you know kept climbing so I was like, okay, that's fine. You keep methods, Cami Kleenex, and you just try to upgrade another like really fast young SMG. Assuming Cami is going to be your flex. Now it's possible you could run Cami as the second sub and you go for another flex player, an established flex player to play alongside them. And then methods tweeted out, my watch has ended. Now I'm like, oh my God, we have to find another main AR? Like what the, <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought it was a little bit easier than it was going to be. Um, so my methodology was try to get a young SMG with a lot of upside who can bring you to that top four position because if the top four is Dallas, if the top four is a new phase team, if the top four is Chicago with Dashi, like if you're a GM, don't settle for mediocrity, right? Don't push for a top eight for a ninth position, right? Like let's, let's like what kind of player can okay. allow you to compete with those level with that level of competition um, so I try to look for players like that. So you're basically trying to look for good players. Your five minute spiel was, I want to look for good players. No, <laughs> not as good players because there's good players, but like I want players who like with a lot higher upside. Like, like Bance is a good player, but if you take a risk on some other on some other people, like they can be better. You know what I mean? So you're be looking worse, for great players, though. but it might be worse. That's what high risk players, high risk, high reward players. Oh, so you're just talking about if if I'm thinking about a high risk, high reward player, I'm I'm thinking about somebody who's unestablished. I'm thinking about somebody who either unestablished or somebody who was really good in the previous. Challenges. Yeah, someone exactly an AM, somebody who was good in BO4, but struggled in Mon Warfare, who you think can bounce back, or maybe somebody who was underrated by their current team. Okay. Okay, you know that that makes sense. Um, I'll Wait. just give you some insight for, you know, how I constructed my roster or, you know, the top prospects I had. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to attack it from a more statistical standpoint. So I, 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 you know, I took a look at how our players that we currently have, you know, Methods, Cleanest, County Bands, performed on different modes. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to see, you know, what mode we were not, you know, worst at and try to tailor that to... 
uh, tailor a player to, you know, what we're bad at. So we can kind of round out our team a little more, fill in the gaps. When I was looking at, when I was doing the analysis, it looked like we are the worst at S and D. So of the three modes, you know, uh, of the three modes of hard point domination, S and D, yep. uh, we were worse at that. And I think it was very clear towards the end of the season that we were worse at S and P cami is the only person that's sticking out on a positive S and D in, um, uh, a positive KD in SND. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, in terms of our win loss percentage for each mode, for hard point, we're sitting at 89%. For domination, we're sitting at 115%. So go and pause them there. SND, we're sitting at 81%. So, you know, it's very clear that we struggle the most with that. So I'm, I'm well, was looking for people who would. You know, fill that gap who had good uh, s d records okay. to kind of round out the roster okay let's just get right into it uh for the main ar slot because obviously we talked about whether or not we give up whether or not we think methods would lead i think both of us agreed we think he won't but think he'll stay um but for the sake of the argument i mean what if he does leave who do you replace him with yeah so once again i don't think you're gonna leave um and my two replacements are i mean they're long shots they're long shots so uh, they're not necessarily that realistic, but you gotta give me one realistic it. option. You can't just be like, my two replacements yeah. are Clayster and Arcides. <laughs> like, like no yeah, well, shit. Well, Clayster, Major Maniac. You know, what? No, I think Major Maniac's is reasonable. Uh, Major Maniac, I feel like, is a little more of a possible option. You know, yeah, for sure. I will say that he, Major Maniac, wasn't didn't have as good of an S and D record as Clayster. You know, Clayster had a one point one three KD. Uh, on S and D and Dallas had a 1.33 win rate on S and D. So, you know, that, that was really standout ish. Uh, but obviously he's a hard, he's a hard ass. Major maniac, uh, you know, did a 1.07 on S and D, you know, and then that was actually one of the best out of all the Atlanta phase individuals, you know, and we're not, wasn't as high as we like was, wasn't as high as somebody like Cammy, but it was still good on a great team. So yeah. uh, I think those for ARs are, are good choices. What about you? I think so. I think, I mean, obviously Clayster would make a ton of sense. There's just no way, in my opinion, if you're Clayster, you're a hot commodity. I don't know why I pick Toronto. Like I would love you to pick Toronto, like come here and develop all the talent in the world. But uh, the rumor is he's going to New York and it's like heavily rumored, like heavily rumored. So Major Maniac's an interesting shout. I think I'd go back to like why him over methods though. You know what I mean? Again, from an organizational standpoint, like why would you drop Met this for Major Maniac. Like, is he that much of an up, of an upgrade? Like, I don't know about the stuff behind the scenes. If you think Major Maniac is a significantly better leader and shot caller than maybe S and G specialist than maybe, but again, it's like, is it worth the risk giving up all the other stuff like the you know the backlash and what he brings to the table and other aspects? Like, I don't know if Major Maniac's better than Method. So, it's not a bad call. Like, if he yeah. does leave, but I just I don't know why you would necessarily replace Methods with Major Maniac because also I think Phase lacked leadership. I think it's one of the reasons why Dallas beat them. So I don't know if he was this massive leader. Like if anything, like that kind of concerns me a little bit. Well, I don't know if I, I feel like there may be a difference between phase lacking leadership and phase lacking coordination. It's possible. Maybe they go hand in hand. Maybe they go hand in hand, but maybe, um, you know, maybe but yeah, also I don't, major Maniac major was also Maniac. on Gen G last year. And that was a disappointing team for champs and, and black ops Four. they had another like envoy and havoc, some really good players. And they sort of fell short. Like, I don't know. It's not a bad, it's not a bad call. I just, I think I'd prefer methods at that point. Yeah, obviously, once again, realistically, like, I, I just don't think methods is going to leave. Fair enough. So it, Fair enough. it's not too big. So what about you, though? Who, who are your picks? Uh, for me, I'm going to bring up my little homework sheet here. But initially, I would I would definitely have uh, Waskins. If you're going to drop methods, I think you got to bring him back with somebody who I think oh, has sorry, a potential. That was also on there. My, yeah. I also have Waskins. <laughs> Waskins would be a good shout. Um, especially when you have Cami and Kleenex. you got a kind of a European vibe going on. Um. I think Weskins could potentially be a really good player. Obviously, he's got some stuff behind the scenes. If you get that figured out, that might be one of the few people who I think is like, okay, you could argue it's an upgrade over Methods. Like, one of the few. Um, so, if you are going to let someone like Methods go, I'm kind of okay with that. For a Weskins, maybe. We'll see. There's at least upside there. Uh, the last one is is, um, is actually Insight. Now, this is someone who is interesting. If you guys follow Twitter at all, there's been some interactions between, like, you know, Cami or sorry, Kleenex and Insight and Dominique. And for people who don't know who Insight is, he was actually the main AR on Singularity, which was the amateur team that Kleenex played for in Black Ops 4. They went to champs. They had some insane success. I mean, obviously, they were able to knock out, I believe Envy was the big one that they took out. 
Um, even in pool play, they actually, you know, beat Methods' team and Luminosity, to be honest, even though Luminosity beat them in the rematch. So he was a mania for them. He was a mania for Singularity this year where they came second place at champs for the Challengers and one of the probably the widely considered second best team in European Challengers. I think somebody like that could be another interesting role. If you're trying to look for a young talent, I know he's the end game or he's rumored to be whatever, like one of the end game leaders uh, for that team. That's sort of like part of his reputation. So if you want more of an end game leadership, I think that could be a person who you would take a shot on. And he has built in chemistry with Kleenex. Now it goes back to like, is it worth the risk? Like you're picking up an amateur from a challenges team over a guy like Methods? I have no idea. But if you are going that direction, maybe you want to save some money. No. Um, I think it could be an interesting play. And I think I saw like Dominic, like an insight post or something. And Dominic posted like a meme and I was like, Ooh, spicy. Uh, maybe I'm spicy, drinking yeah. way too much of the Twitter juice, but at this point, like it's all I can do. You know what I mean? Like it's all I can do. Yeah. I think you're drinking a little too much of the Twitter juice. Twitter Where, juice. Yeah, fair enough. I might be. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like that's the, you know, that's one of the bigger cases. Um, another person. So let's look at flex and subs. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of, for me, I think one of the biggest like flex, flex, um, individuals that I think is actually realistic, very realistic pickup is Goddard X. You know, so yeah. Goddard X, um, is an absolute beast with 1.24 KD on S and D. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, you know, he's a name that is, you know, once again, like you were saying earlier, a little bit high risk, a little bit high reward. You know, he plays great through the first part of the season, dropped off a little bit. I, you know, a little bit concerning that he got dropped from the roster. Like, even though he wasn't playing as well, why not drop somebody else who, you know, yeah. wasn't playing good consistently? Uh, so, you know, there is that. Yeah. But, you know, he still was uh, performing. And I still think that, you know, maybe it was just a team chemistry thing. Maybe he comes onto this team, he jams them properly and has a good time. Could be. One thing that concerns me a little bit is I know Krim did have his, like, podcast thing where he sort of talked about players on – uh, Minnesota who were trying to win and players who were just trying to pad stats. And one of the players he actually called out specifically by name was God or X. Now, mind you, that is just Crim Six's yeah. opinion. It's not like it's law. Like, I don't want to be like, well, can't pick him up now. Because you're right. Minnesota was one of the better teams at the beginning of the year. And a big reason for that was because God or X was playing like an MVP caliber player. Um, he is more of a flex role. So you're right. You would probably have like a Wuskins or a Methods or an Insight sort of on that main AR slot. Um, I think he does have potential to elevate this team if he hits. But that's an interesting play. I agree. That's a good shout. Yeah, it could, it could be a good shout. Uh, once again, like in terms of the uh, Crim Six, you know, I'm talking about padding stats. It's weird because, you know, that makes logical sense. You know, how he's describing it in terms of individuals, uh, you know, taking shots and getting kills instead of standing on the hill. Like that makes sense. I think it would be interesting to go look at advanced hardpoint stats. Uh, you know, shout out to Brandon uh, yeah. Novitas on the uh, Paris Legion, analyst for the Paris Legion. He creates amazing stats pages yeah. on Tableau. And one of the big ones is he just put out was advanced uh, hardpoint stats. You know, mm -hmm. maybe good to look at uh, what his uh, hill time is comparatively to other individuals. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, for me, for the flex role, I actually didn't have too many because I kind of penciled in Cammy as my flex obviously i think the god the person you'd want this if you can get him available and there's rumors that he's shopping around still even though he was initially rumored to ogla as priesta uh i think that's my you pick clayster i think priesta is my like long shot you know what i mean getting on my hands and knees and praying that priesta comes back to toronto not back to toronto but comes to toronto i think he'd be the perfect fit alongside this roster and you get like a, a methods priesta came okay, kleenex is a really good shout um Maybe Priesta, I think, maybe run, ran AR in World War II, I think. So you could potentially even have him as a main AR. We didn't talk about him, but if that's an option, I mean, that could be deadly too. Um, I would love to see him as sort of a flex player. I think that would be a really cool sort of option that Toronto could potentially look at, even yeah. though I, I don't think he comes here. But, hey, crazier things have happened. Yeah, exactly. So tell me, what other picks do you have, Spencer? What other people would you, wouldn't you would mind seeing on? Yeah, I guess the final ones is I think the way I would do this is you keep your main AR, methods or whoever, you have your flex and cami. You have your one entry sub and Kleenex, and you probably try to find another young, hungry, you know, cracked, if you want to call it, sub. Um, so I've sort of looked at that for the final ones. I think if you want to go to the amateur scene and take a high risk, high reward player, I think uh, Hydra is a great shout. A lot of people have been talking about them, and this isn't just because Clayster recently tweeted that Hydra was the best AM he thought. If you go back to our previous Twitter comments, we've been talking about Hydra for a long time. We've known about this kid, even, you know, while Toronto was still playing. 
um, as being somebody I, I had penciled in as someone I really want Dominic to take a look at and take a, a, a sort of a, a stab in the dark at. The only reason we haven't talked about him more on Twitter is because, in my opinion, I think him going to Paris makes a little bit too much sense. Again, we don't have any no information on this, you know, no no leaks. Um, it, it's just to me, it's he has so much hype surrounding him, and he's French. Like if he was Canadian, Toronto would be all over him. So I don't know why Paris wouldn't be. So I could see it being tough to get somebody like him. Uh, but even if, but if you can, I think it's worth it. Uh, another player would be Pred. Um, there's a lot of hype surrounding him as well. APAC, I think he's another player you can take a risk on. Maybe you pick him as like your fifth, and sort of have like maybe Bans like your fourth, like I said. And if Pred doesn't work out, they can always safe swap Bans in there. That would be another interesting play. And then if you want to go for more established, I think Dylan and Asim would be two really, really interesting options. Now I know that Dylan had a bit of an off year this year in Mon Warfare. He didn't necessarily impress me, but he was one of the better, if not. You could argue he was a top tier sub in BO4. And some fun stats that I was able to look up. Again, shout out to Brendan for the Tableau chart that had these stats. He had the second highest percentage of team kills behind Octane. He had the second highest engagements per minute, again, behind Vivid. Um, and he actually had a better KD than Vivid. He was recently streaming with Cami, so I took note of that. Also, Cami was streaming literally today with Dylan. I was like, oh, that's interesting. He was number five on, I think, kills per minute in the entire league. And number six in opening, you know, dual interactions for, like, S&D. So I think he's a really fast sub with some high upside potential. He was overlooked because he had an off year. Asim was another one from the Minnesota Rocker, who I think plays the way that a lot of people should play. And maybe just because the team suffered at the end of the year, he didn't necessarily get the stats that maybe he wanted. And at the end of the day, he's also Canadian, so... I mean, I know how overactive media thinks. I know they love Canadian kids and building that brand in Toronto. I think that'd be another interesting person to add. Yeah, no, those are all good uh, plays. Obviously, um, assuming that we have five on means that we may get rid of bands. I'll give you some of my uh, current uh, challenger players that I think could be good ads. Uh, in terms of your, your more safer challenger players, people who've played pro before, you know, I'm thinking royalty and Afro. You know, royalty uh, currently on Triumph. Triumph just won challengers. Uh, and they'd be doing really good. He's a former pro and he has good S and D record. Once again, I'm looking for to fill that S and D gap. Mm -hmm. Afro, he has great movement. He's a great flex player. Brand Brandon, no one again. No Brand Novus. Come on, man, you're doing great. I yeah. uh, tweeted he has a third has most six kills. Cam Allen, too, to be honest, I used Cam Allen a bit for this. Sorry, I, okay, I just want to shout out Cam Allen. I use him as well. He has some good stats too. But yeah. continue, continue. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, uh, um, Afro he has the third most kills per round in S and D. Fill in those stats. Pentagrams, best as uh, these these are pentagrams. Is somebody who uh, hasn't been a pro before, so he's a little more um, unproven Risky. and unknown. You know, he has he, but he had the best SNE record in in, um, in challenges with a point nine seven kills per round. And finally, you know, one person that you know has been doing pretty well um, hasn't doesn't have a pro record, so he's a little more sketch. Is uh, Jimbo? You know, he's he's a Canadian player. So once again, harking back to that overactive media side, he plays for Phase Academy, which is doing pretty well at the start of the season. Yeah, and he's you know, a pretty talented SMG player. So Chris, before we end the show, because I think we've sort of given our thoughts here, who's your who's your four? Yeah. Who's your four going next year? Who's your, my four? Give me your four. Give me your four that that's going to push this team to a top five, deep champs run. I'm thinking realistically. Realistically, I'm realistically uh, methods got our X. Kleenex Cami. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. I'm going to go you? with, I'm going to go with, I'm just not going to say methods because if method stays, it's methods. And if it doesn't, um, I'm going to go with Wuskins Insight, maybe. Then Cami Kleenex. And then I'm going to go with Hydra or Dylan. That was my two. I can't, I can't decide. Hydra's a higher risk. Dylan's maybe a little bit more realistic. I don't know if we'll get Hydra. But I think Very those, correct. I think that's what I want to see. Give me, give me a Wuskins. Sorry, Wuskins, Cami, Sorry, Kleenex, Hydra. So Wuskins, Cami, Kleenex, Hy Wuskins, Cami, Kleenex, Hydra, or Wuskins, Cami, Kleenex, Dylan. And then obviously if Method stays, then just do the same thing, but just with Methods as the main AR role. Um, I still think he's going to okay. stay. I just, I don't know. He tweeted that my watch is over. Like now we got to speculate of him leaving. Like this, this whole show was just who's going to be the fourth. And then it turned into, you know, is Methods going to stay? If he doesn't, who's your main AR? So, I mean, I think that's, that's probably out of our hands. Um, cool. I think well, we could make I, a I, I team we're... with methods, so yeah. I think I think those are some really good insights. Now, guys, we say it, we say it over again. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. 
If you uh, didn't like it, comment, tell us why you didn't like it. Yeah. And um, other than that, we're here every week. We're doing uh, these shows all the time. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, as always, guys, you know what? Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed.